Today we're playing the new indie game that has taken over Twitch by Storm Lethal Company. Is it truly living up to the massive hype or merely serving as content fodder for creators? Stick around because we're about to find out if this is the real deal or just another passing trend right here on the First 30 Podcast. <laughs> Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Callahan, and alongside me are the space cadets we left to die in space. Tim Harris. Hello. David Marino. It's very cold. And Rick, <laughs> where's the beard? Hogerhide. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Ooh. That's a good, good nice reference. One. Yes. Good reference. Yes. <laughs> it's the only space thing I got. I'm done. <laughs> Did you the Star Wars nothing? Uh, no, we don't acknowledge Star, Star Wars in this house. Sorry. <laughs> I got the this this one. I got okay. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. I can I can handle that. Uh, speaking of Rick, uh, I mean, okay, there's two things that we got to point out. Uh, first, Rick shaved and it I freaked did. all of us out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and second off, I'm sporting the coolest onesie ever. Look at this. Your breakfast like is that, brunch everything. Is there it's a got, shrimp on that? Yeah, it's brunch. shrimp. Wait, no, that's not shrimp. It's a uh, it's a uh, a a glass of wine being spilled oh, everywhere. It's sp- okay. From oh, it's okay. My... Oh, it's a mimosa. <laughs> yeah, it's oh yeah, mimosa. mimosa. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I'm morning getting... mimosa. Got gotcha. drunk. We got waffles. <laughs> we got cinnamon rolls. Like it's it's got donuts. Look at that. Look at that. I had like uh, hoity toity cocktail shrimp for breakfast. I was like, this bougie I mean, motherfucker. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's like, oh, there's not caviar on this. I don't know if I can wear it. Uh, well, I don't eat any of that, so it wouldn't matter anyway. True. But I do eat all this, so it's all good. But we're going to move on because, Rick, um, I think we got to play a little game. With GTA 6 on the way, uh, we've got to acknowledge that GTA 5 was the best-selling game of all time. So Rick is going to quiz us on whether or not we can figure out the best-selling games of other franchises. I don't know how well we're going to do with this because I feel like I have a bias towards a lot of games that aren't <laughs> probably a favorite of everybody else. But I don't know. Maybe we can figure it out. Context well, clues are the best selling ones, right? So just think of whichever entry is the most milk toast, broad appeal entry in the series. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Star, uh, Star Ocean 4. Uh, yes, that's the one. No one, no one wants that to be the best selling one. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you able to guess what the best-selling video game in this franchise is? For the Mario series, is it Super Mario Odyssey? Mm. Oh, wait, are we just answering? No. Just yes or no? No. Is that the best-selling in the franchise? No. No. Yes. (laughs) No, Mario Kart 8 with 57 million copies. Uh, I believe oh, the best selling. Like, yeah. Mario Jason you James know what? Too. Okay. That's on me. It would have been a multiplayer game. It's, 100%. So remember, this is the best selling game in the franchise, which means it's the umbrella of everything. Okay. Now that you know that, we're going to try again. Is <laughs> this the best selling video game in this series? The entire franchise for Call of Duty was Black Ops 3 the best selling no yes well uh, okay so are we we're talking about all of call of duty or like the black ops subgenre all, <laughs> all of call, call of duty, duty. All, all of call duty. of duty yeah. i guess yes it was i'm the biased one. so the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> it was the best uh, one to me yeah i'm also yes. gonna say no yes the answer is no. It's Black yeah. Ops, the first one with 32 uh, million one. copies. Really? Where is two? Where is two? This is bullshit. Yeah, yeah where's two Lies. representation? Come on. <laughs> is this the best selling video game in this franchise? For Tetris, is it Tetris? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, wait, no. Yeah, it would like have to be. Or, oh, I know Tetris, There's that Tetris is really good. The big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, okay, hold on. That's no, Tetris, though. Thing. It has to be. It has to it be Tetris. The... I... Tetris <sighs> has to be. What are you thinking about over there, Chad? Because no. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> like, I know there's like Tetris, but then they like technically upgraded Tetris. So is it Tetris or is it Tetris? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different it's, versions it's of Tetris, Tetris but, all the but same. it has to be Tetris. It has to be Tetris because that's like the long standing game. Yes. Yes, it's Tetris. Tetris is one of the best selling <laughs> games of all time. Like, I thought so, but I was confused by how many versions there are. There's still mega tournaments to this day for Tetris. Correct. I think like even if like the Game Boy Tetris is like the copy that sold yeah, the most. It is. 
<laughs> Next up, is this the best-selling video game in this franchise? The Lego franchise. Was it Lego Star Wars, the video game? No. The first one? It, the exact title is Lego Star Wars, the video game. That's the one with so, all yeah, of them? That's the first one. Oh, is the, uh, the first one? Okay. No. No. I, I Remember, don't this, think this, this encompasses one. all Lego. Yeah, I know, but yeah, like all like, I mean, for one, I'm almost going to guarantee Harry that Potter. one of the Lego Star Wars games is the best selling, but I don't know if it was the first one. I feel like Lego Harry Potter one. That's my thought, too. Or Lord of the Rings, because everyone loves Lord of the there Rings. Was, oh, there's two of those, though. Harry Potter. I'm, I'm still going to say it. no, because I, I almost no. think it was complete saga. No, I think it's Harry Potter. The correct answer is no. It was Lego Batman, the video oh, game with 12.05 million copies. Really uh, shouldn't shock me at all because that I am actually really good. You know <laughs> what? He was in the movies, so yeah, we did, did be they all... make a Lego Star Wars movie? No, they That's made a fair. Lego Batman movie. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're right. I know, but like that that game came out way before the movie did. I know yeah. that's probably why they made exactly. the movie. Oh, that's true. Okay, it's the best selling. Well, we better like market this. Is this the best oh, selling video? Is this the best selling video game in this video game series for Pokemon? Is it Pokemon Red and Blue? <sighs> yes, that because it, okay, is that encompassing the the remasters? No, no because those are no, those would be separate different. games. Okay, yes. that's separate. Okay, um, man, no, I feel a... like silver and gold did I feel so like well. Yellow, oh, yellow was, good, but like Pokemon really ramped up after those first gen games. Mm -hmm. I, I, have I to really say, think I, it's I've owned silver all and gold. of them since silver and gold, so I can't. I'm gonna I say no because be I almost think it was the third gen games on GBA. Okay, I'm still. I'm okay. I'm Ruby say and no. Sapphire. Yeah, I'm gonna say no and say it's silver and gold. You're all wrong. Red and blue are the best selling Pokemon okay. games in the oh, entire franchise. I was gen one. Represent. I can't believe I ever doubted it. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> that's why everyone, you, anyone who knows anything, knows that there are only 151 Pokemon. Exactly. You ask any millennial <laughs> anything past Red Blue, and they're just like, Ugh, what's a mega evolution? This is crazy. Oh my god, why is there a pine cone talking? Uh. <laughs> Last one. Is this the best-selling video game in this entire franchise? For Assassin's Creed, is it Assassin's Creed 2? Which one's that one, David? No. That is the one with Ezio Auditore. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Those was a fan, fan favorite, though. Two, two, and its spinoffs are fan favorites. Yep, but you know what the answer is? Black Flag. I don't think Black Flag. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure? gonna say no, just because Tim reminded me of Black Flag. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes, it is, because I think it is a fan favorite. You're wrong. Why would you do that, Chad? It's not. It's Assassin's Creed Four with 15 million Black copies. Flag, so, no, Black Tim. Flag, Tim. Yes, that, that was that was my favorite one. Uh, it was. I never played it, so yeah. shockingly. Johnny Depp as a as a video game, essentially. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't play that one. Yeah, Chad, it was the one life. with pirates. <laughs> I know, and I never did play it. Actually, I think I have it for like a Switch, and I never opened it because <laughs> it was on the like, clearance one day. Perfect. <laughs> Got to bust that thing open over Christmas. Uh, I didn't keep track. Everybody wins. Points are Yay! free. Nothing, Yay! nothing matters. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else well, is no, 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 Chad. Our the points opinions. do matter. We all got them. Oh, you're right. <laughs> but you know what else, what else does matter? Our opinions. I changed it because David changed it on me. <laughs> uh, because we're going to give our opinion on Lethal Company. The company is high, high. You'll have your very own ship, your very own crew, your job, collect worthless garbage to return to the company desk. It's easy. Man, is, do we have a lot to say on this game, I'm sure, because uh, it was a great multiplayer game, which, don't, which we don't do very often on the show. I don't think no. we do too many multiplayer games, so it's really nice when we get to all sit around and just like just go hog wild on a game so really i think the last the last multiplayer one we looked at was party animals yeah yep yeah i think you're right so and that was a while ago and we love that one so spoilers if you want to watch or listen to that <laughs> episode but um but that so let's move on to a little bit let's talk about the game um do we david i want you to explain to me a little bit about like what's the interactions like what are we doing in this game you start off 
Well, you basically do everything in your ship. That's like your hub. So you start off in your ship and you have to select a a location because sometimes you can go down to a planet. There are these optional moons that you can go to that are like expensive because they allegedly have good loot. Yeah. On these places. But you select a place, you go down, and then you just scavenge. You yep. you go into a building and you find valuable items to take back to your ship to sell to the company for money uh, to fulfill your quota that you've been hired for. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, to be honest, when I first played this game, uh, Rick picked up the manual and he screamed at me, how many pages is this? <laughs> uh, so there's a lot more to this game than just that. Uh, and I will say this game is in early access, so... There's a lot of time for this game to get better and better. And I believe the dev, who is a solo dev from what I hear, is planning to like bring more updates. I think this game has some legs um, to begin with because I see every streamer playing it right now. I see a ton of high profile influencers playing it right now. So we'll I'm pretty sure that this is gonna like maybe not be the next um what's Among that us. game? Among Us. I but yeah. it'll probably be popular for a little bit because like it reminds me a little bit of Phasmo. Yeah. Because, um, like, Phasmo, you start in the van, you have your stuff, you have to buy your stuff and put it in your van, and then you walk out, you go into the haunted house and try not to die. Like, that's the, basically the same <laughs> premise here. Like, you just go scavenge stuff and bring it in. At least the only thing you don't have to do is, like, figure out what the ghosts or monsters are. Thank God, because we would never even get close to one. Uh, and come back, but can I? Can I hey, also? We were doing okay the last time we played Phasma. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, we were getting the hang uh, of it. Um, can I make an argument that I really don't think that this game should be listed as a horror game, the same way that I don't think Phasmophobia should be listed as a horror game? Uh, uh, I mean, okay, make the argument. I mean, phasmophobia, I spent the entire time opening cabinets and throwing all the plates on the ground. I feel like <laughs> that's the same chaotic energy I bring to this game where I just gave me a shovel and I tried to kill everything. Like, I <laughs> I think it's like not it, it's not intentionally scary, right? Like, I it's mean, not it's not I giving ambiance and vibes. Uh, and you're not like, I don't know if I may. When yeah. I was closing the door, panicked for my life <laughs> and got eaten. <laughs> Well, while the door was closing, I panicked. Okay, so I do. Right. I think I do think that it can have its moments, just from the interactions between you, the de environmental design, and like whatever enemies may be there. Uh, I do think though that that is essentially user generated. I don't think the game is designed around these horror yes. elements. It's I th I think it's the other thing too is we should talk about those enemies in there because from a like high level there we ran into a, a handful like it wasn't a million different types but we had no. um so like while you're scavenging there's like monsters essentially in this around. facility yeah. and then bigger scarier ones show up later in the day so it's like mm. a time mechanic to where hey you got to go in and find stuff that you know is valuable and you bring back to your ship but then you run into these monsters and there was like small ones like there was a bug boy there was a like a uh, two armed guy who walks on his arms and stuff like that. We saw a, yeah, most of those ones are scared of us too. Yeah. We saw a blob that would like liquefy you if you stepped into it and seep under the doors too. So even if you close the door yeah. on it, it would seep underneath and try to get that you. classic movie term. But then there yeah. was like, I there was two <clears throat> big scary boys that I can think of. One was the forest giant. So like after you leave the facility and you're walking back to your ship, Oh, sorry. There's three giant, giant guys that would just pick you up and eat you. Yep, there yep, yep. was uh, sandworms. I don't know if they were coming from above or underground that got us a whole bunch of times. I have no the idea. One, because I'm, I'm fairly certain I saw the sandworm that got both of you. Because I didn't realize we were so close to each Did other. It come from underneath and me? it was, it definitely jumps in an arc. It like came up and jumped out and then went back on. Oh. So they're definitely underground. Okay. And yeah. then the third one was probably the spookiest one uh, that it was like a mannequin looking guy tall oh, with like a slinky oh, my God. head him. and he would move if you didn't look at him. So like you had to walk backwards and hope it was that, uh, like... weeping angels. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Oh man, I didn't even see that guy because I oh, saw yeah. a, another big monster uh, while I was in the truck. When I scanned it, it was called eyeless dog. 
and that was the one that snatched Tim oh, from yeah. the wall. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to escape. <laughs> yeah, me and David. Okay, the best part about this game is like it goes from zero to sixty. I will very say very quickly. It, it, it's like very quick. Like the I I think the there's so many comedic times because again in this game when you're playing it you have um, proximity chat on so when you're playing with everybody if they get too far away you can hear them like in the distance talking a little bit more, like that or, the, or if they're close up you can hear them better but the best part is just like watching someone walk away and hearing ah! and then just like <laughs> cut off <laughs> and nothing else I, I think my favorite part is uh, if you're already dead once other people die that you can hear the dead people talking to each other yeah. like in among us so there's people that always enter screaming like <laughs> like even if you're not <laughs> watching them like i'd be watching chad and all of a sudden tim would come in Bleh! and just like <laughs> oh yes you died hello cuz that that one uh that one room where i think three of us died to the bottomless pit and then rick had to make it out all by himself but tim was down at the bottom and then i failed the jump and died, and as soon as I get into the spectator room, she's like, well, welcome. <laughs> she died the same way I did. That's one thing I do like about this game, is that in Phasmo, you have to like play as the ghost, and I actually find that very boring. That's one criticism I've always had against Phasmo, is like, being a ghost, like, why? I'd rather just spectate than be a ghost. You don't in like this throwing game, basketballs at people while you're a ghost? Come on. I mean, for like two minutes, fine, that's kind of fun, but like, outside of that, like, it's not like you could do anything to the yeah. people. Like, like I can't lead the ghost to them. I do or wish like, you could talk to your ghost friends. It would be yeah, nice. I mean you could talk to your ghost friends. Like you, if someone else dies. Well, even okay. I think I yeah, you can. If they, you know, Phasmo, since you you're you're essentially still on the map, which is kind of intangible. If they allowed the ghosts to like point you in the correct direction as mm. the the ghost you're deducing got more difficult, so they could like still help. I think would add to the gameplay of that. What th I think this one, um, Lethal Company, what this is missing is all of the creatures that are just kind of around are just big things that attack you. Mm -hmm. If they mm -hmm. had different, because like, what's the best part of a creature feature in like a movie is discovering the rules about how you deal with these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they all had different abilities that you needed to play around instead of just like, there's a monster in there let's avoid it or if you have a shovel or something else like let's kill that thing it's it's pretty binary in that there, like let's either avoid it or let's trying because yeah. the blob we don't know how to kill the blob you can't kill the blob and it seeps under doors so that it, it does something That's different true. than the, the others the blob is a good example and of the what they angel. should do with the well i didn't see the weeping angel so i don't know about that yeah, it was literally like rick had to walk backwards but the minute he turned the corner it chased him but the yeah, the blob is a really good example of what they should be striving for with the other monsters. Where like they all have a gimmick that you need to play around. I I yeah. think they did. I think we're just dumb and like probably yeah, didn't get perhaps. there. Like because the, there was lots the of stuff that we didn't buy. Like we didn't buy stun guns or zap guns as they're called. We bought a flash bomb. I don't know what you guys ever did with it because uh, we, I think it just we sold. It was it. just on me. We never yeah, used it. We never used <laughs> it. Like um, I think there was a lot of different things. Some definitely have to be like sound based i don't know what or who but i don't know long story we also short saw a spider and we don't know what the spider did either so there's like right. i think there's stuff in there but we just didn't see it and yeah, I don't there's know how at many least there five are. mechanics that we do know about with the creatures so i feel like they might be taking some inspiration from like scp a little bit mm -hmm. um on some of these creatures so i would be intrigued to see if there's some of those elements coming up like in like future updates maybe well that's um, the thing that's how like phasmo sort of has extended its shelf life as yeah. they put in new ghosts or like new items that you have to use to try to track those specific ghosts or whatever like that that's probably where where i see like longevity of this game because like with among us maps i think was essentially all that's been added that's different like that differentiates gameplay pretty yeah. much yeah the different tasks you well do. they did add like after like they saw the success of mods they started adding like the sheriff and the yeah. i don't remember the other guardian oh. angel or something like did that they, so they did add some wasn't there a it was either tag or like a prop hunt variant oh it was a tag added? So like there's one where like you knew who the monster was, but you had just run away. But the monster mm. had very limited sight. So yeah. like you just had to get out of its way. Which but, is cool. You yeah. know what got me back into the game? 
the, the uh, little achievements VR? just to get different uh, outfits. That mm. was that was all it oh. took. That was all it took. <laughs> Something to work need. towards, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, that's that's another thing that we should bring up is that it, the a difference in this game is that it essentially just plays. Like, you play out. There's no long-term progression to where you unlock outfits. Like, we got a second suit, the radiation suit, at one mm. point. Do we yeah. buy um, that, though? Yes. we. I had to buy it, and oh. then it loaded it. But then once we restarted because we died and didn't make the quota or whatever like that, uh, it wasn't there that time. So oh. it, it's not even like you're unlocking them for you get to use them later on. It's that's it. It would be nice to have cosmetic things that you just take with you no matter yeah. what. Well, I think that's at least right now. I feel like that's something that because the the right now, the main gameplay loop is the scavenging where you find items to sell. But that almost feels like secondary like it should be secondary content where like you land on this planet and there should be a main objective that you can scrounge for money while working towards this goal Mm -hmm. instead of just oh we land on a planet go find stuff and sell it like that that feels like you should be working towards something while doing that i see i can see your point i i i Maybe even the opposite where like the main goal of the game is to scavenge and find money, but maybe that there's like secrets that you can co- go and find within this facility because I mean, and maybe there is, and we just haven't found it. Cause I think there cowards. definitely is because like, there's, there's all the walls that we don't know what to do oh, with yeah. stuff. I, it might be, but there could be something else back there that we don't know about. <laughs> like maybe there's I like could see something extra back there. That'd be really you need, cool. You know, you land on this planet, and you, you're going to look for stuff because you still need to make the quota. They can still have that goal. But you need to, like, work your way through this, whatever it is, like a mining facility or research center or whatever these places are supposed to be. And, like, you, like, get to the end of a long section and turn a beacon on or something. And then and then you have to make it out with the stuff that you scavenged. Yeah. And maybe that's what you could do is maybe it's... it's- it's the those uh, cosmetics that Tim was talking about. Maybe like behind secret doors, you that's where you get these cosmetics, and that's what you could work towards getting. Mm-hmm. And like, it gives you a reason to want to like go through all these things. So I don't know. It's something to to consider overall. I could work with that. And then also, you cannot tell me that the things in the basement weren't guarding something down there. <laughs> we didn't get to see, but like there was like three I mean, hallways you tried. down you there. Jumped I got that murdered. Hole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got murdered, but there, there's something down there. I don't know what, but there was something. Also, I want to give you a quick reminder that this show is on YouTube. So if you're listening, you can go to youtube.com slash at First 30 Podcast. And I screwed it up last week and I got it right the first time, guys. You should be proud of me. All go right. help us juice the alg- algorithm. Give it a, yeah, give it a, let's a juice, like juice or something. It straight up. Like, juice it. Put it right in your veins. Yeah. <laughs> juice uh, it. Put some comments down there too. And subscribe or stuff, stuff. You know, they tell people to do that. So I what's guess, that like, other one? Press the bell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Press that <laughs> bell button. Oh, what other crap does Actually, people say on those things? I don't know if it's a slow rollout of things, but I've noticed that the bell, at least the bell icon, Mm-hmm. Uh, isn't there all of the time. Instead, when you subscribe to a new channel, it basically just brings up a drop down that says, how do you want to be notified of stuff? It's like an automatic. Oh, I never noticed. It, 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 it's, it's not an automatic. You get all of the notifications, but it like automatically presents you the choice instead of needing to click the bell separately. Well, well there you go. Don't I press think, the bell. Uh, click the drop. Down. <laughs> yeah. If you're presented with it, choose yes. Do it like a, can, you, you want do, to be notified. Can you do it then like you a? Can, uh, you can be the first one to yes. tell us how wrong we are. That's a prestigious <laughs> achievement. And we'll we'll always be offended too, so you can get that. Yeah, perfect. You'll hear about yeah. it. We'll pin your comment. Everything. You <laughs> do it. I think that should be the thing you do. Just always pin comments and talk shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all we do is we we love the talk shit. Oh stuff. yeah, the pinned comment of shame. That's like a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, the sh- comment of shame. I love it. Yeah. The next time we get a a, a crap a comment that tells us how trash we are, uh, to a degree, I'm not gonna put like offensive, like actually like rude, racist, <laughs> actually offensive stuff. Offensive yeah. stuff. But, but like, if you have a bad that are take just against us, yeah, pinned. bad takes pinned. Yeah. There you I'll go. Take that. Yeah. Try to win the award. <laughs> yeah. Try to win it, please. Yeah. Go <laughs> yeah. over there. Uh, anyways, let's go back to Lethal. Uh, I almost call it Lethal Weapon, uh, <laughs> Lethal <laughs> Company, um, because I want to find out from you guys: was this fun, Tim? So here, here's my thing with these kind of games. Right, these kind of games are great 
with friends. They're very fun. They make their own entertainment because you hear your friends die in the background and it's just <laughs> hilarious every single time. And like you get these big jump scares out of nowhere and everyone starts panicking. Always a great time. But all of these games, except for maybe Phasmophobia, are terrible to play by yourself. They're just not oh, a good time even to play alone. Not fun by yourself. It's all right by yourself. Like if you know how to actually play the game, it's fine by yourself. But like outside of that game, I don't think any of these games have staying power without friends. I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you there because I, I don't see myself enjoying this game unless I truly make it a challenge. I think there's one thing that. that if like the dev wants to make it an element of play by yourself, the challenge is to get to the other side, you know, to get through that facility and not get back to the ship because then you can add that element of like, okay, this is a horror game. This is actually scary instead of it being like, okay, I got to go in and just run out. I think the reason why Rick, you don't find it scary is because I died 30 seconds in every (laughs) single (laughs) second. Yes. But you don't, you aren't forced to have to go through. You could leave at any time and just be like, I'm out. It's the same thing about Phasmo for a lot of people. It's probably for you. Like you could just dip out whenever you want and be like, oh, let's just guess and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's no horror there when, uh, and unlike in Resident Evil, you're like, the gates close behind you. There's like 15 zombies in front of you. You're like, my only choice is to go forward towards zombies. You know what I mean? I think that's the difference here. So if they I add maybe too, that element, we could get a first, like a even single player. like not necessarily needing a, a goal at the end, but just a, a primary goal in general, like maybe something on your ship breaks when you land and you need to find mm. a part to fix it before you can get out. Okay. You know, it's not difficult to find, but you know, you're working towards something while scavenging. But the other thing too is, I lost my train of thought. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> we'll what I was know. going to say. The, the, the monsters um, got him. Yeah. Yeah. The, the demons. They do <laughs> well, David, I do, um, wanna, I do want you to talk about one thing, because you mentioned before this that you had a problem. You, you, I don't know if it was a problem, but you said that it was early access. And, you know, we know your opinion on early access. You don't typically like them. So yeah. what are your thoughts on well, this? Mostly, it's just that the main objective right now of scavenging stuff feels like side content like that feels like an optional objective that Mm. should be taking place while working towards something else like i don't i I don't have an answer for what that something else should be but this scavenging to meet your quota feels like something you would do while working towards that other like overarching objective maybe i have the thought all right here's it like maybe if you go through and you find the room and you turn on the beacon, you meet your quota. Like that just, that's your quota. Like you, that's the end, but you can have the option, just find stuff and just book it and leave. Or maybe even like giving you an optional way to meet that dollar amount. Like scavenging is obviously going to be the most valuable stuff. Cause that's what this company wants. Yeah. But if you go through and like you scan a bunch of stuff, like you tag these monsters, you find these locations and they, mm. they reward you with some money, just not as much as, you know, bits and bobs are going to give you that would help you complete your goal instead of just needing to go in and grab this stuff. But the other thing that really feels like early access and actually learning that this dev comes from Roblox makes a ton of sense (laughs) is this feels like one of those. And I know this has really negative connotations. Hell yeah. Say it. I'm not fully committed. Say it. I'm not fully committed to this, (laughs) this idea, but it feels like one of those asset flips, throw a bunch of stuff in there. And then they just threw a filter over it to make it look slightly different. Cause the readability of this game is absolutely awful. Yeah. I think they did that on purpose though. The outlines, the really strange, like half tone shading especially in that one level that we accomplished nothing in oh the, oh, the yes. foggy fog. one yeah. oh, that's why we didn't talk about terrible level we didn't talk about the fact that there's like environmental hazards that happen on hazards each, uh, each and map. when you land it shows you like you know generating seed and then some like six or seven digit number or thing but i don't know what that controls because how how many times did we land on a planet and then it's that fork around a pit that goes to the bunker that's right on the other end mm. so i like, th- we saw that most of the time i think that each of the planets is a map right so e- or each of the moons is a consistent map yeah. and then the seed is like environmental the stuff and how the stuff. inside is generated 
mm. like where okay. the where the so it's not procedurally are. generated. It's like a set amount of generated stuff, and it's just that seed is what you're playing. Yes. Well, I think I think some of it is procedurally generated. I think like um, in the inside lot, like, is probably yeah, procedurally. Yeah. Mm, a lot like Left Maybe for Dead Two. Uh, less Left 4 Dead 1, they kind of fixed it in Left 4 Dead 2, where there are basically spots around the map, and that spot can be an enemy, it can be an item, mm-hmm. it can be a uh, another sort of envi- like a level hazard, like we saw the um, mines. the hmm. tri- Not trip mines, but they were just like landmines. The mines land mines, yeah, they were just sitting <laughs> yeah. out. Which I kept was like a thinking like... were like items to grab and then exploding on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think those those areas can be different things. So that's what the seed controls is like how those like this area is almost guaranteed to spawn something. But whether it's beneficial or a hazard is going to change. Yeah, maybe. Based on the seed. Cause yeah, the like, inside of those buildings was always definitely very different. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but the one I wish that I have to agree because I wish that there was more like more not- inside. Th- just stuff. It felt empty. How many times what there was one Chad that we. Oh ran. yeah, we went through the entire thing and felt like we saw nothing. We got we nothing. got five things. Yeah. yeah, it was all dead ends. Yeah, yeah. You like go down the stairs, but go into a corridor, dead end. To be fair, there were a ton of doors that were either locked or we had to like open through the ship. Which I'm torn on how I feel about the having to go all the way back to the ship or like constantly have someone at the ship stuck there. You know what I mean? Where There's they're not supposed really playing to be the someone game. at the ship to monitor because the monitor shows the person watching all of the traps and creatures so they can guide you around so those. So here's the thing that I <laughs> want to say about that. I feel like I don't mind the monitoring, but maybe what they need to do is like if they're going to make that more fun because I don't find that fun personally. It's having being stuck at the ship and just being, all right, go left, go right. All right, let me unlock this for you. If they're going to do something like that, there has to be something in the ship that you have to constantly do. Like maybe you have to protect it against the monsters that are out there. So you had like check the, you know, make sure the shields are up or you have to go out there and shoot a couple zombies or not zombies, but <laughs> monsters. What game are you <laughs> talking I'm about? Back for blood in my head. Uh, maybe you have to shoot some uh, monsters with like what, the ship cannons or something like that. I feel like if that's the case, they need to do something like that to make that part fun like a five nights uh a little mechanic. bit yeah. yeah a little have, not totally but almost uh, yeah a little bit almost be like asymmetrical co-op where you have whoever's staying on the ship has like their own they're the mastermind that they can take yeah. care of and then like the people searching are doing they stuff keep the that's actually around. a good point <laughs> but i think to help we'll facilitate that on. what i would like to see is some of the things because you start with nothing you have yeah. absolutely nothing when you start the game and you have to like buy all this equipment. I think some of that stuff should be just standard kit, like a, like a basic, really weak flashlight. You should probably start but with only and then one you can buy a better one, you know, so that everyone gets everything. You know what I mean? Like, I feel and like the idea get, of divvying it you up get is basic, fun. like shoulder mounted radio that maybe has a range or is otherwise limited somehow and then you can buy the upgrade but some of some of the stuff that you you purchase it feels like it should be standard kit to help facilitate this back and forth like co-op gameplay let's think about this from a uh, corporate standpoint where you're just (laughs) making me money we're making it i'm not giving you equipment I'm sending you with your hands and you're bringing me back stuff you can buy your own (laughs) that's fair he's he's thinking of the themes (laughs) yes i mean overall this game has a lot of potential, I think. It, mm-hmm. it being in early access is probably a good thing because the community feedback and hopefully this dev, he's a solo dev, you know, got to keep that in mind. You know, maybe it, maybe he gets a team and gets a bunch of people and they could just like truly it's, vamp this up. It's apparently made $6 million already. So Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, I told you, like, I've been seeing this everywhere and like, good for him. You know what? Or good for them. I don't. I don't know their gender at all. But like, honestly, I, I'm impressed with what Wolf. they had. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Rick, do you want to explain what you discovered? <laughs> oh, the, the, I mean, he he's a Roblox developer who uh, is definitely a part of the furry community. This is Talk now the this show. I was gonna say second time. episode in a row. <laughs> Get to talk and then about one it, before that we talked about it. I don't. It was at least episode three where we talked about. Be, oh, at least four maybe because in Cobalt Core I definitely announced this you as did. furries in space. Oh yeah. yeah, maybe we, I am obsessed with furries. And I just, <laughs> this is my awakening. I don't know. 
this is the moment. This is your, your <laughs> where you just realize what everything is. Oh, I just spawn next episode with like a wolf head or something on. No, you got to join me in the scaly verse. <laughs> <laughs> seeing, no, seeing or hearing, hearing how much money this game has made already. I'd like to pose a question. Mm-hmm. Okay. D- does it look like a $6 million game? <laughs> no, it, it, irregardless of what the game looks like is, is this game successful because it is a good game or because it has become a content farm for people to make stuff from this game i would argue I, that it's both because while it's yeah it's it's definitely and here's here's the thing right all these people are playing with their friends for the most part and that is what generates the fun in this kind of game so it is a good game in that regard and then on top of that it creates fun content because the fun of playing with your friends is when everyone dies horribly and everyone likes watching that kind of stuff so i mean it's it's yeah. the same thing as playing party animals i'm not playing that by myself and yeah. the fun of that game is playing with other people in chaos and sues yeah. that's this game that's the same thing here's the, here's the thing though like even with party animals like if you if you were playing and you joined a random lobby like you're not going to have as much fun, but no, you would still I, I be think able, you're right. I don't, you would no still be able to play here. this game. Yeah. And you know, you'd get some enjoyment out of playing it just with random, even if you didn't talk, like you would get some enjoyment. Hey, out I, of no, listen, party I, animals. I, I think, I think the split is like, you have Mario party s games. So like Mario party is not going to be as much fun with people you don't know, but if you played it, you'd be like, okay, I know how to play it. Yeah. And then the other side is the phasmophobia where if you do not know them, it is not, or um, what's the, the among us that was uh, like on an old timey ship. Chad, oh, we played it. Oh um, gosh. Oh, hold on. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Oh, but... you're talking about like the, the steampunky one. Yes, yeah. yes, whatever yes, that one I'm was. I'm blanking on it. It's um, like... I don't know it's called. <laughs> but like, if you don't know the people, we, I tried to play a couple of games with people that we didn't know. So it was like me, a friend. First and class then, trouble. That's it. First class trouble. Yeah. We joined in another party and they were like mad at us because yeah. we weren't playing as quick. Well, as, but like, right. It's just... And- I don't the know. same thing yeah. happens with phasmophobia. People get so mad if you're not like an ace at the game. <laughs> it's yeah. like, mm. I'll agree. It's awful. And that's the thing. And, I, and the, to be honest, I'm the bad person to talk about like any multiplayer games because I won't even play like Apex or like Call of Duty or Fortnite with randos. I don't, I just don't because it's not fun to me. Some mm. people do, but if I do end up playing with randos, I'm muting myself and them. There's no communication. <laughs> All right. We're just playing together. <laughs> We're just a very lobby. wise man. <laughs> I just don't like the idea of potentially putting myself into that world. Like, that's not why I play games. If I'm playing games in a multiplayer setting, I want to play with my friends. Like, I, I'm open to like playing with someone I don't know very well, but I at least need some beginning conversation, not just like, I play Fortnite, you play Fortnite, let's go. Um, I just don't think that that's very fun. I know a lot of people like that, I, but I also don't think this is the game for that either because there's a lot of communication. And I feel like if you don't have comedic value like or comedic thoughts in this game, like that's half the reason why right. you want to play this. The, the chaos is the fun part. And when you go in with randos, those people just want to play the game like it's some kind of like, yeah, they're trying know, to run it A to B and we got to do everything perfect. And if you yeah, screw this, up this, one yes, thing, yes, you didn't too, flip right? on the radio at the exact moment I wanted. You, you got to find rap. every piece of scrap, yeah, you know, that, <laughs> it's, that's a no. <laughs> yeah yeah so i think i think we will just leave it there but i mean i know what david had a few grievances so i'll, I'll leave my this one but tim i actually want to hear do you have any additional grievances before we end off here uh the the only grievance that i have with this game and like it's same thing's been said already is just it's not going to be fun when you're by yourself so like it's ten dollars and if you have friends to play it with absolutely but like just like all the other games, you know, shout out to, uh, what is it, Ghost Exorcism Inc. Game's great. <laughs> I forgot it's about so that It's so good. Game. Running around screaming goofy. the last rights at ghosts while your friends are <laughs> panicking around you. It's hilarious, you know? But doing that by yourself is just dumb. And, like, no, it's the it's same thing with all these not. games. And I just, you know, it's, it's just a style of game, though, so I can't really grief the game for it. That's fair. Rick, do you have any last thoughts on it? Yeah, I would say that... Um... 
I normally don't like games that handhold too much. And I feel like this game would lose some of its charm if it told you exactly like, here's this monster. Make sure you figure like you have to go through the you can yeah. look it up in the um the, the manual. terminal. Yeah, the oh, manual terminal. or the in terminal. The area, yeah. But like a lot of it was just dense. Like I just didn't. It took us so long to even start getting the wheels going a little bit and understanding what it was. Um that I wish it did a little bit more hand holding. Maybe it's just we rushed into it too fast, but I think we did. I could <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you, but yeah. I, I I think I agree with you guys on that one. I think if the developer can get some some feedback from us, it would be to like add a little bit of extra, you know, things to do other than just grab stuff. And then also, I don't know. I I I think that's really it. That's the main thing I want to worry about. And, oh, and add stuff to the the ship, like yeah. to do. I think those maybe, two things. Maybe make scanning things count for some money since you're discovering stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Other. Yeah. I think those are the big notes. But overall, I think I think you know pretty good game. But let, let's find out. Will we continue? All right. Since we all played the game, it's it's we'll just go in, in a circle here. So, uh, Rick, would you continue? I, I think it's the same rule as phasmophobia. I will never suggest it to a group of friends to play, <laughs> but if I get invited and it's been a while since we've played, sure. Totally. will play it. If I were to ever boot this up on my own, you have full permission to check me into a psych ward <laughs> and see what is going on in my brain. Fair enough. We'll scan it. Don't worry. We'll get perfect. The perfect. There you go. All right, David lethal company. Would you continue? Uh, same basic vibe. I mean, I, I would continue playing this obviously with you guys, you know, if Chad's like, Hey, we'll play some lethal company. I was like, all right, I'm down. Let's go. Let's, you know, let's see what's, uh, what we can do this time. Or even if there's like a new update or something, I would definitely like check in, follow this game, see how it's coming along. Um, but if this was something that, you know, if you were to hold me down and say, you know, would you play this game without anybody? tagging along like no i'm I'm not going to play this by myself but if you guys want to play i will play right along with you yes all right tim would you continue Um, lethal company 100 percent would continue with friends just like them uh this is not a game to play on your own uh i'm very interested to see where it's going to go because i i want to see the updates and this is still pretty early in its lifespan so like i think there's a, a really high bar that they're kind of setting here since they're getting all this attention right up front. Um, so hopefully they can keep up with that. And I'm very, very, very interested to see where it goes, but uh, I don't think it's ever going to be a game I would play alone even after all the updates. So uh, with that $10 to have fun with your friends for a while, mine as well, right? That's fair. And will I continue lethal company? hundred percent. I think this there was so many funny moments watching Rick just walk into the quicksand and then just like silently just melt into the moon was probably one of the, my all time favorite moments uh, uh, of any gameplay footage I've ever seen. So I think obviously there are problems with the game, but it is early access. It's a solo dev. He's got $6 million now. I'm hoping that he gets a team. <laughs> you know I what didn't, I mean? I didn't look when I, uh, bought it like just before we started playing mm-hmm. earlier when did this come out like when did it oh that's a good it, point it feels very new it it's only been a couple uh actually it's october 23rd it came out See. but i don't think it got popular until maybe a month ago okay I so it's I like anything until recently we're on the cusp yeah yeah, yeah. pretty it, early it, in its okay. life it's a, it's very much on that Maybe not quite so much like Among Us, because Among Us was out for like two years before it kicked off. Oh, yeah. Among Us didn't get popular until we went to lockdown. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that was the reason why that popped off. But like this obviously came out. It like it fell, you know, off the radar. I was like, whatever. But then then some, you know, probably big name streamer picked it up and like, bam, everyone got it. I don't know who started this trend, but honestly, I think good for this uh, this dev. You know, hopefully the extra attention will, you know allow team or no if he wants to continue developing this solo good on them 
but hopefully the attention brought to this game will allow them to make what they want to yeah because it does have potential yeah it, it is it, it's a fairly solid foundation even if right now it is an early access but it, it does feel like an alpha proof of concept rather than something that they're going to be you know just polishing this core it feels like something they can add it feels like something they can improve upon oh for yeah. sure they could definitely improve upon the fog or at least give you something <laughs> to get through it because yeah even got... the flashlights didn't help that's the thing no. oh, anyway sorry i'm, I'm not going to talk about that because that frustrated <laughs> the heck out of me oh my gosh but i look forward to future updates in the game and thank you for listening to the first day podcast and again if you want to watch this podcast and see our beautiful faces you can go to youtube.com slash at first 30 podcast yeah.